Hello and welcome to Clarkonomics. In this video, we will be discussing scarcity and trade-offs. So jumping right in, scarcity. Economics is all about scarcity. You might have heard it described as you know, the study of money or the study of business, but no. At its core, at the most fundamental level, economics is all about scarcity. So with that said, what is scarcity? Scarcity is the condition of unlimited wants versus limited resources. We want this much, but there's only this much to go around. And so if you think about, okay, well, what is scarce then? What is limited? What is finite? You know, literally everything is scarce to some degree. Some things are more scarce than others, but whether it's uh, oil or fresh water or uh, livestock or money or the time that you have in your day, the time that you have in the year, everything is scarce to some degree. And so if you think about who has to deal with scarcity, who does this problem actually apply to? The answer is literally everybody. Everybody has to deal with scarcity because everything is finite. Nobody can have unlimited everything. Everybody faces the same problem. So at this point, it start, starts to sound a little bit more like a math course than a social studies course. You know, we're dealing with quantities here. You know, if people want this much, but there's only this much, how much is there available for everybody? What makes this a social studies course, like all social studies courses, is that economics is all about people. So it's not about the quantities of the things themselves, you know, the amount that's wanted versus the amount that's available. It's about the people and how they make decisions to deal with this problem, the problem of scarcity, because it applies to everybody. It's a fundamental human problem. So keep that in mind as we move through this economics course. Economics is all about people and the decisions that they're making to deal with a problem that everybody faces. So how do we deal with this problem? You know, since everybody faces the problem of scarcity, how do we deal with it? Well, the way that we deal with it is by constantly making these decisions that we call trade-offs. So a trade-off isn't the same thing as a trade. It's not like, I have this, I'll give you this. A trade-off is when you are presented with two options, but you can only have one. So that's what economics is all about. You know, if we can't have everything, we have to choose the things that we do get. So a trade-off is simply defined as the act of giving up something in order to get something else. If I give you two choices and you can only have one, you're going to need to make a trade-off. If you could always have all the choices, well, then you wouldn't have to make trade-offs and scarcity wouldn't really apply to you. So for instance, imagine that you have two alternatives to choose from. Uh, let's say I present you with an option that you could either have an apple or you could have an orange. And I say you can only choose one, you have to pick one. So whether it's this or a slightly more complicated decision, you'd have to think about each of your two alternatives. And that's the terminology we're going to use for these two things. We're going to call them alternatives. Each one has its own advantages and disadvantages. You know, in the case of these fruits, it might be, you know, flavor uh, or health, things like that but you have to weigh these and figure out which ones mean more to you or which ones mean less to you. Once you have done all that, you are ready to actually make the trade-off. And there's a little bit more terminology that goes along with this. When you're making a trade-off, you're always gonna have two results from that trade-off. The first thing is the thing that you decide to get. So we're gonna call that your choice. So we're not gonna call these two things choices, we're gonna call them alternatives, but the one that you do choose is your choice that's gonna leave one that you didn't choose. The thing that you didn't choose, we're gonna call that the opportunity cost. The opportunity cost is the next best option that you didn't choose. You could have chosen it, but you chose not to. So the opportunity cost is what you gave up to get the other thing. So you got the apple, you had to give up the orange. And you know it's rare that somebody comes up to you and presents you with two fruits and says pick one. So we need to think about opportunity cost in a little bit more advanced terms. So look at it like this. Uh, we can have different forms of opportunity cost. For instance, you go to the mall to buy a pair of jeans. And we'll say that that pair of jeans cost $50. So the choice in this situation, to ask you that, would be the jeans themselves. The jeans are the choice because they're the thing you actually did, the, th the thing you chose, the thing you got. Now, if we ask ourselves, okay, what is the cost of those genes? We can look at that actually in a couple of different ways. We can first think of the money. It's a $50 pair of jeans. They cost you $50, easy enough. But we can also measure cost in things besides money. We can measure cost in, for instance, time. 
the time it took for you to drive to the mall and get these pair of jeans, that was another cost of the jeans. They cost you time and money. However, neither the money nor the time would really be considered opportunity costs here. Yes, these are things you gave up, but we have to look at this a little bit differently. The opportunity cost of those jeans was whatever the next best thing or things you could have bought with the $50. So imagine there was like a, a shirt or something instead that you could have bought with the $50. When you bought the jeans, you used that $50, but you gave up the um, opportunity to buy the shirt. Or let's say you were going to use that time that you went to the mall to instead sit home and watch something on TV. Well, the next best activity, watching TV, would also be an opportunity cost of going and buying those jeans. So that's what we have to think about here, you know, the consequences of these trade-offs. Because you might think, okay, well, I'm not, you know, necessarily going to the mall to buy jeans all the time, or I'm not being presented with fruits to choose from. But regardless, you have to think about how many of your choices have a cost, because the answer is actually all of them. Every single time you make a choice, you're going to have an opportunity cost. Even if there's no money cost or there's no you know, time that you give up, it still means you didn't choose something else. So there's always an opportunity cost. And if you want to now think about the frequency with which you make trade-offs, you're making trade-offs every moment of every day. You know, for instance, you're still watching this video and you're still watching this video and you're still watching this video you know it's the idea that every moment that goes by in your life you're presented with a trade-off you could do this or you could do that and every time you pursue a course of action there's a course of action you're not pursuing and so you're always every second of every day creating an opportunity cost don't think about it too much you know you can't live your life thinking about what you're giving up but you should be using that decision making process to realize that nothing is truly free Every decision I make has a cost, even if it's not measured in money. And that's what economics is all about. Economics is the study of how people make choices in order to cope with scarcity. If we all face this problem, economics asks us, okay, since everything is limited and you face this problem, how do you make decisions to deal with this problem? So that's why this is all about social studies. We're looking at how people make their decisions. So why learn economics? Why learn how people make their decisions? Well. First, if you learn how people make decisions to deal with scarcity, you can make better personal life decisions yourself since you, just like everybody, are faced with the same problem. So we're going to look at how to make the best decisions with your time, with your money, and how to minimize our costs. And then also, from a more macroeconomic, the big, broader economic standpoint, there's a lot of economics in the news and you know, business and economic policies and politicians and the plans they have for the economy. And a lot of it might go over your head if you don't really understand economics. But if you even get like a basic understanding of economics, it's really going to help you evaluate, you know, for instance, a politician's policy to see like, okay, is this really going to work? Is it not going to work? Are they, you know, lying to me about what's going to happen or not going to happen? It's really going to help you be a more astute citizen uh, living in a democracy, which is always a good thing. So there are immediate personal benefits for you to learning economics. But in doing so, you're also going to create a better country by virtue of being a better citizen. So there's a lot to learn. I'm excited to keep teaching you about it. Thanks for watching.